Hello, welcome to Asianet Dialogues. I am Pratima Bhatt. It's time to take back POK. This is the dialogue we are hearing these days. But is it really possible? That's the question. Let's find out the answer. We have the guest today. We have Indian uh, Air Force uh, retired Air Vice Marshal B K Murli. Sir, welcome to the show. Yeah, uh, thanks a lot, uh, Pratima. It's good to be on the show. Yes, uh, the pa Pakistan occupied Kashmir, sir, uh, has always been a contentious issue. We have seen that. But now, Defence Minister talks of uh, taking back POK, and then uh, uh, Lieutenant General Upendra Dwivedi, he's also talked about it, execute the orders like taking back Pakistan occupied Kashmir, if at all uh, uh, government asks for it. But the question here is, is it really possible? Pratima, at the outset, I must uh, uh, make it very clear that whatever I am saying, uh, you know, it is not anti-establishment and uh, definitely my intention is not to criticize the government. Okay. And uh, nor, nor uh, am I uh, criticizing, uh, uh, you know, uh, the defense minister of the country. But, uh, you know, we need to understand the background of this uh, problem before we analyze really the statement made by uh, our Raksha Mantriji on the 3rd of November in a rally in Himachal Pradesh. You know, uh, for those who are not aware, Pakistan occupied Kashmir, uh, which is to the north of, uh, is a part of the uh, Azad Hindu Kashmir, is called as the Azad Hindu Kashmir, uh, was a part of the Kashmir uh, Valley many years ago, and in 1948 uh, we lost it. Uh, the total area of that uh, Azad, uh, Azad Hindu Kashmir, uh, in fact, uh, that Hindu word disappeared, it becomes Azad Kashmir, is 13,297 square kilometers. And uh, the, uh, you know, uh, the capital is in Muzaffarabad. Now, the unfortunate part is, out of these 30,297, 5,100 square kilometers uh, to the eastern side, uh, near the, uh, you know, uh, uh, Karakoram track is known as a trans Karakoram track or uh, the uh, beginning of the Aksai Chin area or the Xinjiang area has been gifted by Ch uh, Pakistan to China in 1963 in a border agreement. Hmm. So today in POK, uh, we call this uh, uh, Saksham Valley, which is gifted to China as area illegally accelerated to China. Now, for those who, uh, who are trying to understand, Pakistan occupied Kashmir belonged, uh, uh, encompasses all these areas. Now, uh, when we say we will take back uh, Pak occupied Kashmir, what do we take back? Do we take back uh, the area minus Sakshikam Valley? Or do we take back area with Sakshikam Valley? Or do we also take back the area where the China-Pakistan economic corridor runs through? Okay, uh, once again, a little bit of a background. Yeah. See, in 1963, there was an agreement between Pakistan and China. It is known as a, a trans karakoram Tract Agreement of 1963, which is the border agreement wherein Pakistan gifted the Saksham Valley to China. Yeah. Now, uh, uh, actually very close to the Saksham Valley starts the Karakoram Highway, which is 1,700 kilometers metal road, class 2, which connects the Aksai Chin straight to Islamabad, and now it is connected to the Gwadar port also. Now, the complete Chinese trade is through the Karakoram tract. Now, when we say, we will take back uh, Pakistan occupied Kashmir. What do we take back? Yeah, and the now, question, that needs here is, to be... question here is, uh, Murli sir, uh, if we take back BOK, if at all we step ahead, then we, we may have to face both China and Pakistan as you are explaining uh, the condition. Are we strong enough? You know, uh, Pratima, as per the information that we have of 2021, uh, China has about 11,000 PLA positioned in POK. PLA is a, a, a you know, People's Liberation Army, that is the army of uh, China. 
So when we enter Pakistan, uh, POK, we will face not only Pakistan army, we will also face Chinese army. Now, uh, it goes without uh, you know reason to say that if we are going to fight a war, uh, heaven forbid, but in case we land up in a situation where we start fighting a war, there are two adversaries in front of us, China and Pakistan. Are we strong enough to take on both these countries? The answer is no. In fact, this the, our defense establishment has been saying this for many, many years when the same comment was made by late General Rawat, our very first CDS, some, uh, you know, politicians made fun of him. Uh, he said, what is this? You don't know anything. But actually, he had made a comment that today we are facing a two and a half enemy, two enemies, that is uh, uh, the north and uh, east uh, side, and one enemy within, half an enemy within. So two and a half. Now, do we have enough uh, infrastructure? Do we have enough soldiers, aircraft, uh, then, uh, uh, you know, armament, then uh, uh, stores? The, an the answer is no. Now, I I'll give you a very simple example. The defense, uh, you know, uh, budget for Pakistan is 3.5% of their GDP. In China, it is 5% of their GDP. In India, it is 1.8. It has never gone beyond 1.8. Mm. Now, if you do not uh, spend money, if you do not acquire uh, the weaponry that is required by our soldiers and air warriors, what uh, war will you fight? Mm. Now, uh, once again, uh, I must hasten to add, I am not making any anti-establishment comments. Okay. No, I support Atmanirbhar Bharat as much as anybody else. But Atmanirbhar Bharat, if that uh, uh, concept of uh, you know uh, Atmanirbhar, our uh, uh, creation of uh, uh, infrastructure within, if it fructifies uh, ten years later, what kind of a war are you going to fight tomorrow? So <clears throat> the moral of the story is. If there is something that is required by our defense services urgently, which is included in the Defense Acquisition Council list, it must be procured and given. Only then we are strong enough to face the enemy. Today, numerically, we are weak. You see, today we can always uh, find comfort in, by saying that, no, no, so what if we don't have so many aircraft? So what if we don't have so many weapons? We have got the skill, we have got, uh, you know, the, the strength, uh, we are uh, very uh, tactful, we are, you know, entire nation is behind us. It is very easy, very nice to hear all this. But when a soldier goes to fight a war, we need to give him the equipment to fight a war. Yes. Not some, uh, you know, this kind of a philosophical, uh, uh, you know, gyan. But uh, it's been 75 years since independence, sir. But why we couldn't take back a POK till now? These are the challenges we are facing till now. Where is the hurdle? Ah. Now, the hurdle is because of, uh, you know, various uh, uh, political uh, uh, maneuvering. Uh, in 1948 itself, we should have taken POK. Hmm. It's, in fact, this suggestion was given to then the Prime Minister, then the Defence Minister. They turned a blind eye to it. Hmm. In fact, when the Razaks came uh, from the north and uh, they attacked our uh, Kashmir, and uh, uh, actually some area, uh, we actually drove them out of Kashmir, but we were not uh, able to drive them beyond Mujafarabad. Uh, in fact, at that time, if we had shown some guts, and if we had shown some, you know, uh, uh, actually uh, uh, milit military uh, thinking, we could have taken back POK, we could have even taken Gilgit Pakistan, uh, whose citizens are of uh, Marathi origin. So we could have taken back all these areas which actually belong to us. Hmm. In, now, not only we did not take back POK, we handed over. Uh, 
oxide chain on a silver platter to China in 62. Yes. You see, this is all self-created problems for us. By 1963, it was too late. Oxide chain was gone. Then the, uh, you know, China entered POK and the POK was strengthened by uh, Pakistan. So by, it was too late uh, now to wage a war. If at all government decides to take back a POK, is it possible for some parts or uh, how long it might take for the Indian uh, force? Uh, that is anybody's guess. You know, this is not a war which uh, definitely a soldier of the Indian Defence Services would like to fight. Yeah. The reason is very clear and very obvious. Uh, today, uh, you know, when you face uh, two uh, enemies, uh, uh, you know, in that area, uh, uh, actually uh, the chances that you will really win the war or win a limited conflict is very, very low. And secondly, we also know that numerically we are not superior. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, I would like to narrate a small incident uh, for the benefit of the viewers. Yeah. In 1971 March, uh, then Prime Minister Indira Gandhi calls uh, uh, Field Marshal Maneksha, who was the chief of the army staff, and tells him, uh, please prepare for a war to liberate Bangladesh because we have already uh, landed up with the 10 million refugees from Bangladesh, mm. from eastern Pakistan, sorry. Um, uh, Gen then General Maneksha tells Indira Gandhi, sorry madam, we are not ready for a war. Mm. No chief will ever say this, but then uh, Field Marshal Maneksha had the guts to tell the Prime Minister of the country, sorry, we will not fight a war. He also said, we need to prepare. At the time of our choosing, we will fight a war. And that is exactly what they did. For uh, They prepared for war. Uh, and, uh, you know, they trained Mukti Bahini, which became Maitri Bahini. And in the 1st of December, they invaded and they liberated Bangladesh. Yes. Mm -hmm. We must also admit uh, uh, Pratima at this point in time, then when uh, uh, Indira Gandhi asked uh, uh, Russia, uh, you know, Alexei Kozygin was those days the, uh, you know, pr uh, premier of Russia. He immediately sent a lot of uh, military equipment to India. At this point in time, if now India says, we are going to wage a war against uh, POK, please help us. Tell me how many countries will fun, come forward. Exactly. Not a single country will fun, come forward. Hmm. So we must understand the, uh, you know, actually geopolitical uh, uh, situation uh, that it is not in our favor today. So uh, uh, where does that leave us? We need to prepare. If at all there is a confrontation tomorrow uh, for taking over the uh, POK. Let us say, I mean, uh, this is argument sake. We need to prepare. We need to get all our equipment. We need to prepare and we need to be ready. If at all, we have to face a, uh, you know, wage a war against two adversaries. But we are in, uh, again, 75th year of independence India. We have to remember that. But still, still we are struggling, sir. Still we are struggling to combat the terror activities in our part of Kashmir, Indian Kashmir. And in this case, if we all uh, succeed in taking back a POK, then will not be a, a matter of threat to the safety of India? Now, whether we really succeed in taking back POK or do not succeed, the threat is still there. Yeah. In fact, it is not threat. To, uh, when I say threat is still there, Threat has now become 10 times more. Uh, you know, whatever uh, cross-border terrorism that a terrorist of, uh, you know, uh, his Hezbul or, uh, you know, uh, Jaysh Mohammed and others uh, infiltrating and coming inside our, uh, uh, you know, Abohar, Fazilka, uh, Amritsar and Pir Panjal, Pil Panjal rail uh, through a tunnel. Uh, uh, has happened in the past, but now there is an altogether different threat to us. Uh, one more point I want to uh, make here is, 
when the Taliban took over Afghanistan, the very first thing they did was to release 4,500 prisoners from the jails of Kabul. Hmm. Those, uh, those people belong to uh, Al-Qaeda, uh, you know, tehrik e taliban uh, ISIS, and those supporting the, uh, you know, uh, terrorist activities against uh, India uh, in Indian soil. So all those terrorists found a safe haven in POK. Today they are all in POK. From POK, they give a call. They hmm. say, Ghazwa e Hind. They say, in another some 10-15 years, we will turn India into a Muslim nation. So this is the kind of a situation that is brewing in that area. Now, they have stopped the cross-border. We managed to somehow uh, stop the uh, cross-border terrorism and terrorists coming into, inside our country. But then we know for a fact that today in our own country, in Jammu and Kashmir, there are sleeper cells. And Pakistan terrorists, terrorist organizations backed by Pakistan Rangers and ISI is supplying weaponry to them through drones. Yes. You see, today, in the year 2022, from 1st of Jan up to 30th of November, there has been 191 uh, drone incursions in uh, Abohar, Fazilka, uh, you know, uh, Amritsar, and the Pir Panjal range in uh, Punjab, in uh, sorry, in uh, uh, Kashmir. And each uh, drone brings about uh, four to five to six uh, kilograms of uh, payload, uh, uh, you know, of uh, assault rifles, M4 carbines, and high explosive grenades, then uh, Indian fake currency, and Afghan made drugs. Hmm. But if India attacks the POK to take back the POK, then what repercussions would we have to face internationally? Uh, because as we see the consequences in uh, Russia-Ukraine war, sir. So even we may have to face such uh, sanctions. We may not face the sanctions uh, through the uh, United Nations. Hmm. Uh, definitely we won't uh, face the sanctions through the developed nations like, uh, you know, United States, France, UK, Germany, and uh, Japan, and uh, probably Canada. Because our, uh, uh, you know, uh, diplomatic efforts and our relations with these countries are very good. But the, but the most important factor is the three same, very same countries will not support us. Yes. That we must be very sure. They mm. will not support our, uh, you know, military engagement with our neighbor. Mm. That, you know, that they have made it uh, clear many, many times. Yes. Because today, they are not able to stop the, uh, you know, uh, uh, Russian aggression on uh, Ukraine. And secondly, in uh, United Nations, in the Security Council, uh, we have, you know, always abstained from voting. We have not supported Ukraine. We have supported Russia. Now, uh, all this is done with, uh, you know, with uh, a specific reason. We have got an excellent relation with Russia. The entire world knows that we cannot really give up uh, Russia for the sake of Ukraine. But at the same time, uh, we cannot give up uh, Ukraine also. You know, it is a tightrope walk and uh, uh, some kind of a very calculated uh, decision was taken by our uh, foreign affairs uh, ministry. But the fact of the matter is, in the entire United Nations of 130 nations, some uh, 10, 50 nations supported Russia, the rest uh, supported Ukraine. So today, expecting all these countries to come in support of India, if there is a confrontation uh, because of the POK, now uh, is uh, left to anybody's guess. But uh, you were air wise marshal, sir. So with your experience, what is your suggestions uh, to make our force maybe stronger? Or how can we increase our strength against the China maybe? Or what are the changes we have to make it? What is your suggestion? Most important thing for us to realize is our war doctrines, our nation's war doctrines, our uh, defense forces war doctrines, do not advocate a war. Yes. We are not the first strike, uh, you know, for, uh, or 
uh, forces. We do not wage a war against any country on our own. But if some other uh, adversary, some other country wages a war against us and makes a preemptive strike on us, we have the capability to absorb that strike and retaliate. Hmm. That we will do and that we will do better than them. So we, uh, you know, our capability definitely is there. But right now, uh, you know, uh, major, majority of the developed nations today, they use their defense services as a deterrent. Hmm. So we must bring a strong deterrent. We must have a very strong defense services. You must, uh, uh, we must give them equipment. We must give them aircraft, uh, whether it is a MMRC or, you know, latest, uh, uh, you know, uh, weaponry, uh, then latest weapons to the army and uh, uh, maybe the uh, aircraft carrier, to carrier task force to the Indian Navy. Similarly, weapons to the uh, CRPF and the paramilitary forces. We must procure and give them or make in India and give them. We must uh, increase our capability. We must increase our strength and use it as a deterrent. And finally, sir, final question. What is your message to the government and the force? Yeah, in fact, as far as the uh, defense services are, are concerned, I'm a part of them. I know they, were, they are 24-7 into 365. They do the, uh, They train themselves to uh, keep them ready for the, event, for the eventual day. But then the government must support them. The, uh, you know, we all uh, actually we are in favor of Atmanirbhar Bharat, but remember, if we uh, Atmanirbhar Bharat is not something that we start today and uh, you know it uh, materializes 10 years later, uh, that, that is not of uh, any use to anybody. If Indian Air Force, our Army, our Navy want something today, you must give it to them. We must make an effort, the government must make an effort to understand. You know, and uh, the government must increase the defense ex expenditure and at least match with our uh, northern neighbor, at least make it 2, 2.5, 3% of the GDP. Uh, you know, if uh, we are safe and if our armed for defense services can keep us safe, then the development. Yes. If we are not safe at all and if we are open to uh, terrorist attacks and uh, you know, limited conflicts from our neighbors. What is the use of this development? It is of no use to any uh, citizen of this country. Thank you, sir. Let's hope for safe and secure country, our own India. Thank you for watching. Thank you very much.